uh, actually the end of December and drop back to 3.75%. Um, Governor Rauner proposed, uh, proposes a budget that had a $2.2 billion shortfall. He took into um, his budget considerations, pension savings that really can't exist unless there's <coughs> pension reform, which we know that there was a ruling that said that can't happen. Um, June 24th, Governor Rauner signs an education budget approving um, $244 million increase in spending um, for K-12 education. So that was um, an appropriation bill. Um, there were 19 different appropriation bills from the Senate um, and from the House and uh, recommending appropriations for all the different funding areas. So I actually voted against all of the appropriation bills with exception of the education bill. Um, the Senate Dems and uh, the Senate, uh, excuse me, the uh, General Assembly, both, both sides, uh, the Dems on both sides, really recommended a budget that was about $3.6 billion unfunded. Uh, I just felt that it wasn't the right thing to do. And we had a new governor that was elected um, who really wasn't going to want to see that. And I, I felt it just wasn't the right way to handle things. So I voted no. I really wanted to see us sit down together and work towards a compromise. So I voted against those appropriation bills. There are some people that believe that's really not the budget. You know, um, they would tell you that that's what we're asking the governor to appropriate. But I just felt it wasn't a really good starting point. I really wanted us to negotiate before we passed on those kind of numbers. So, um, so Governor Ron, Ron veto, vetoes all the remaining budget bills. As I said, he signed the, um, the K-12. And the reason I voted present on that one, I like to tell people why I vote, why I vote. Um, the reason I voted present on it is that bill included some changes in education funding um, that actually um, allow districts that have higher poverty levels to get a little bit more of uh, the income. So, and I'll show that to you on the next slide, how that works out. So, I didn't want to vote against it because I thought it had some policy changes in it that I thought were really important. So, so we're in last week, um, and the General Assembly voted on a 30-day, I'll call it an emergency, it was actually a provisional budget, uh, that included um, about 2% of the total budget, things that I would say are really important um, to make sure that we have in place. There are you know, people that really can't afford to see those budget cuts, and I'll, I'll show you what they are on the next slide. Uh, the General Assembly, we've continued to meet. We're down uh, every week uh, looking at different issues. Um, we will be down, the House is down this week. I should tell you last week when the House voted on the emergency 30-day budget, they had, um, they were four short of a uh, of 71 which uh, you know if we want to pass this i think we want to be tough with majority so i do believe they're going to be voting again hi nick do you have uh maybe some handouts for us um anyway we'll catch up if we're done with this slide maybe everybody can have those available so anyway we were down last week again and we voted on the appropriation um excuse me on the 30-day emergency and passed it with 36 votes, the House didn't have enough votes to pass it because you need a supermajority um, to pass things now that we're no longer in session. So the House will be back down. Actually, they're down this week. I expect that they're going to vote on that, and I do believe that they're going to have half the votes. So there will be um, a 30-day um, extension of the, this year's budget um, on those items. Uh, Governor Rauner may or may not. Um, veto that but you know frankly he does these are super majorities so they'll be probably overridden and that budget will take effect when is when does the 30-day extension take effect from july 1st uh, yeah from july 1. So, so we're back at this august one we're back in crisis august one um well i'd say we're still in crisis this yeah, is well, just on, yeah. on these issues so let me flip to the next one And, and while you're doing that, Melinda, if the House votes because they're in session tomorrow, if they have, if they do vote, uh -huh. does that mean does that mean you guys get called back tomorrow to go? Was, don't you have to? No, we've already voted. Okay. So. Um, and so here's here's what happened. They voted, sent theirs over. You know, we, so we voted. We started winning the Senate, so ours now has to go to the House. Otherwise, yeah, right. you're so right. That's we would have to. But that's all we're about. 
You probably can't read this really well from here. That's why the handouts are going to be really good for you to have to look at. This just lists the items that are in the emergency budget. Um, there are things like, uh, you know, probation for uh, including sex offenders, GPS tracking, community care program. Um, those programs are really um, programs that can help people who really need help. Uh, people that are um, doing the right things every day. You know, I was. Uh, Last week I met with a, a mother that lives uh, in Zion that has three jobs, makes $8.25 an hour at each of them. Uh, and if not for the community care program, uh, where she's able to get child care at a reasonable amount of money with you know some, some subsidies, some help from the state, she wouldn't be able to go to work. She would be homeless, uh, probably on welfare. And so they're really important programs for people that are doing the right things. Um, Illinois School for the Deaf, Illinois School for the Visually Impaired, Independent Living, also seniors staying in their homes, uh, helping with some subsidies there so that they can stay in their homes rather than um, you know, being in a nursing home where actually the costs can be substantially higher. And did we actually have any handouts? Guys, I apologize, but we ran out of ink to get it up for everybody here. If you have your name on the sign-in sheet with the email address, make sure you guys get email copies of this oh all right thank you i apologize okay so i talked about the education funding changes so these are the schools in district 31 and this is the change so governor Rauner had said that he wanted to see more funding for education so this does have we're going up to about 89 percent proration up to about 91 92 percent uh, but there's also an additional targeted 85 million, which is what I talked about, where that's the change in the formula. You can see uh, the change from last year. Let's look at some of the biggest districts that are impacted are Zion and Round Lake. Let's find Round Lake down here. Round Lake, uh, $3.6 million more uh, in funding. So that's really important mm -hmm. for this community, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. so we have huge socioeconomic issues. Yeah. Um, what are the safe? Safe School and Alex School, what are those? Okay, so the Safe School um, is actually a school that's uh, run by the Regional Office of Education. So um, that was actually in Zion. Okay. They're at, they're, it's a school for at-risk kids that right. specific to them. Right. Okay. All right. So I just kind of like to go over to the things that I've done this year, um, you know, that I am particularly proud of, the things that I think make a difference um, for the district. So I've done a lot of work on um, jobs and economic development. It's interesting, those of you that know me, I, I don't know that this was something that I would spend as much time on as I do when I first ran for this office, but it's just turned out that way. We compete very heavily with Wisconsin um, for economic development and jobs. So. Um, some of the things that we did, I passed a resolution supporting full access at Route 173 um, on 294. We have a corridor that runs along, it doesn't really impact you specifically here, we have a corridor that runs along uh, the state uh, borders. And it runs from really Antioch, obviously further, but really Antioch through Zion. Both of those communities have ready, shovel ready sites for commercial development and we really have trouble getting those jobs and getting those things here without full access. So that's something I really want to continue to work on and hope to continue to move forward. But we passed a resolution just supporting that. Um, the EDGE credit. <clears throat> so again, a lot of you may know this, some of you may not. So the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity um, is obviously our economic kind of engine that does the work with the communities um, in Illinois. So when I was working with a company a few years back, one of the issues, one of our problems in competing was that when you're creating new jobs, you'll get edge credits, tax credits for creating those jobs. But when you're retaining jobs, um, you, um, when you're retaining those jobs, you don't get edge credits for those. Okay, so there was a, a lawsuit um, that, uh, occurred and so anyway so we rewrote to kind of clear it up that you could get edge credits if you're keeping jobs in an area providing you were investing a certain amount of money so it allowed for us to if wisconsin was looking to um, compete with us and to try and take a business from us you now you can see how it worked 
you know, if, if all of the new, they're creating all new jobs in Wisconsin, so they're able to give them tax credits for those. So it made it really difficult for us to compete when we had businesses that were expanding um, and wanting to spend more money when, you know, the state of Illinois would give them credits for creating all of those jobs. Although there's been some interesting press for those of you that follow these things um, that really say that Wisconsin paid too much for these jobs and um, some issues there. But anyway, um, that's why I think transparency is so important as we talk about public-private um, partnerships that we have to make sure we're always transparent um, in what we're doing in economic development. So um, SB 544, this one I'm really excited about. Um, this was one of those that people were like, yeah, no, you can't do this. Um, and I said, you know, I'm going to do everything that I can and, and see if we can do this. So um, most of you know that there is a, um, a nuclear plant that is decommissioning in Zion. So they were open for years. The company chose, after some issues, the company chose to shutter and shut the plant down. So they were... Uh, Let's use the village as an example, um, city, excuse me. So the city of Zion was getting about $20 million a year in property taxes from that site. It also had good jobs. Um, it was a great economic engine for them. When they shut the plant down um, and decommissioning it, uh, the property now with the current assessed value is giving them about $2 million, about $2.6 million. So the argument is, we're really turning this into a, a nuclear waste storage facility. And those are the words that they use, actually. Um, so it's a nuclear waste storage facility. So we said we think there should be an impact there, that a, a community should be able to negotiate an impact fee um, with Exelon uh, for the loss of future revenue. So in other words, would you build next to um, a decommissioned nuclear plant that had 63 casks of nuclear waste? Probably not. So that's that's basically the argument, um, and it passed in the, in the Senate uh, with 36 votes. Frankly, I had 30 votes, and I, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. But a lot of work went went into it. Um, it was picked up by a House member to kill it. Frankly, so um, they killed they picked the bill up to kill it, so it didn't go anywhere in the House. Uh, Representative uh, Jesse up there. Um, I wanted her to carry the bill. She hasn't been able to get the bill. Uh, so I'll start it again next year. I'll do whatever I need to do. But I'm definitely not done with that because I really believe that, I don't know, I, I don't know if I believe that we're actually going to send nuclear waste to um, the Yucca Mountain. I really don't. I, I believe that um, you can see what's happening with the oil that we're bringing down um, from the Dakotas. You can see what's happening on trains. Uh, I can't imagine that people are going to embrace driving casks of nuclear waste through their communities. So I, I really believe that um, we should be talking to Congress. I should, you know, I plan to go there. You know, I plan to make the pitch that you've collected $92 billion for nuclear waste storage. You need to make these communities whole that have now become nuclear waste storage facilities. So I'm excited about that one. I, I like to say I got this from kicking Exelon's whatever. So this one too, um, I was actually a chief co-sponsor on this. I was not the person that carried the bill. I was the first chief co on it. It was a really good bill developed with um, DCEO. It creates a portal. One of the complaints we have as a state of Illinois is that when you're a new business, when you go to um, you know try to set everything up, that it's confusing, it's hard to deal with. So this will be a website that has literally kind of one-stop shopping on it. We expect that it's going to be about two years to get it up and running, but it'll be a benefit. One of the other things I'd like us to look at as a state is something Wisconsin does, and we hear a lot when working with economic development people about this. Um, they do, they have one person. So if you're a business and you know, you're going to open in Wisconsin, uh, they assign you one person that walks you through the whole thing. And it just makes sense. So it's something I'd like to see us do in the state of Illinois. We also um, lowered um, LCC, so uh, Limited Liability Corporations. Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers. I want to say it was around 450 um, to create the LLC. We brought that down substantially to under $100, which is certainly a benefit um, for new businesses and, and creating LLCs.
So ethics and good government. These are things that I think are just kind of at the core of who I am. You know, um, doing the right thing, making sure that when we're looking at, at government, that government's doing the right thing. So this bill, I ran this year. I said, okay, everybody's always talking about government consolidation. Um, we have a study uh, in Lake County that shows that we could save about $5 million, um, if we consolidate the assessors and put them into the county. So, looked around, found out what Indiana did, did some research. Indiana uh, did this a few years back, uh, and they did it by allowing voters to vote to say um, that they would like for their assessors all to be under the county um, rather than at the township level. Creates better continuity, saves money, it's a great idea. So I ran a bill that is literally enabling legislation. That's it. So the bill really is, if you believe that you want to do this, the county, any county, can say by voter referendum, they can put it on the ballot and ask their, ask their voters, should we do this? Within 24 hours, I had 494 slips against the bill. <laughs> And what that means is, and I mean, understand what that takes. I mean, you know, don't you? You're a Republican staffer, right? So you know. Um, anyway, um, you literally, when you are going to do that, um, you have to sign up. You have to go through a process. So imagine 494 people. When I sat down, people on the committee said to me, you don't want to run this. I said, yes, I do. They said, you know, you're not going to get the votes. I said, you know, I look forward to people voting against it. This is the right thing to do. So, um, and I had a few people say, if you do it just in Lake County, <laughs> why? Why would I do that? I want to offer this opportunity to anybody in the state. Not saying do it, it's just you can ask your voters. So, um, interestingly enough, um, I probably got, I didn't think I was going to get any votes to start with. Um, and I just said, I looked at them all and I said, you know, here's what's interesting. Every one of you, Every one of you talks about government consolidation until it's in your backyard. And I'm not even telling you to do it. I'm just saying, let's give the opportunity. Let's create a law that allows it to happen. So um, I got probably just as many Democratic votes as I got Republicans. They wouldn't vote for it either. So the bill went down in flames. The bill went down in flames. And I was really proud to call that bill. I really was. I thought, you know what? It's the right thing to do. So um, our forest preserve, I don't know, a lot of you may know this, forest preserve purchased a building a few years back. Um, it was uh, where Motorola was at. They got a great price on it. Problem is the building is enormous, much more space than they need. They're gonna be moving, um, the forest preserve is moving uh, the museum over there, but still more space. So this just allows them leasing rights to the rest of the building. It'll save us about $500,000 a year as taxpayers. Um, SB 792, uh, Truth and Taxation Notices, just requires that a taxing body, uh, for instance, a school district, um, if they are looking to um, proposing altering their taxes, that they have to post it on their website. Seems simple, but that didn't have, that didn't exist. Golden parachute reform. This ended up being part of an omnibus bill that did not go anywhere. So um, individually, this was really um, an offshoot of the uh, the whole the brooder issue, um, uh, the College of DuPage. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I thought, here's the biggest problem with it to me: that a golden parachute for education administrators. I didn't want it to be pensionable. I thought we should clarify in law that if you did that, you shouldn't be able to pay a pension on that. The other piece of it that isn't there is I also had as part of that bill was also um, that you couldn't buy someone out for more than their annual salary. So there are a lot of different machinations that happen of this bill um, on both sides and uh, not a lot of it actually got passed. Um, reforming per diems. So there are um, committees at the state level. Um, I'll use as an example uh, uh, the gaming board. So the gaming board, because that's really where this actually came from. So the gaming board gets a per diem or a payment when they have a meeting. So they're not paid to be on this board, but if they go down to Springfield for a meeting, they get a certain amount of money 
to, to be at that meeting. And what was happening is there were literally sometimes two meetings in a day that they were getting reimbursed for. So that can't happen anymore. I know, pretty amazing. <laughs> I'll tell you, if there's a way to do it, people will find a way. Okay. Um, so after my foray into disastrous situation of trying to move ahead on uh, any kind of government consolidation, I knew that you know the, the governor had appointed the uh, lieutenant governor uh, to be looking at consolidation statewide, what we could be looking at. I also firmly believe that those things have to occur at a local level, because I think every county <coughs> is different. So in some counties, townships make a lot of sense. Other counties, they don't. Some counties, a forest preserve district makes a lot of sense. Others, they may not. You know, and I'm not suggesting that any of those should be gone. I'm merely suggesting local control and local people being able to make those decisions. So I felt for a long time that the way to be able to do that was to have local conversations with everybody at the table. I call it buy-in. If I'm going to look at townships and tell them that I don't think they should exist, then they ought to be at the damn table. They ought to be there. The conversation should be taking place from the beginning. So the intent of the committee is that there will be members from every, basically everybody on your tax bill. So there will be fire protection districts, school districts, municipalities, park districts, county, townships. Uh, what did I say municipalities? We did. So all of them, so we will all be at the table uh, with representatives also from the state there. Um, and we will start talking about where do we believe that there are areas that we can consolidate. We'll start by looking at those areas, making those determinations, and then moving forward with hearings once we determine where we can come up with agreements. I just think it's the way that we can really maybe actually get these things done. I was excited. I work with Aaron Lawler um, a lot, who's the chairman of uh, our Lake County Board, uh, and uh, Aaron's supportive of this. We're really excited to you know move consolidation forward in Lake County. We're hoping that maybe we can be um, a pilot for other counties to look and go, yeah, if they can do it, we can too. So. I'm like grabbing for this change. <laughs> Doesn't my iPhone do this? It should. <laughs> It'll open my garage door. <laughs> okay, so environmental issues. So I supported no fracking period in the state of Illinois. Um, that bill did not pass. That was two years ago, three years ago, sorry. Um, that bill didn't pass. So we had uh, a bill that did pass um, at the very end of session, um, which was, many people will tell you, the um, strongest tracking, fracking, excuse me, regulations in the United States. So one piece though that was so missing, so I voted for that, it uh, passed um, unanimously in the Senate, and I think also in the House uh, unanimously, but I could be wrong about their vote, but it was close if it wasn't unanimous. So, um, but I wanted to make sure that there was no fracking on or under public lands. So, um, so we passed that bill this year. Um, and then creation of the Illinois Carpet Recovery Stakeholder Group. This one you probably won't see a lot about, but this is one of those things as a legislator, I can tell you is so important to me because of how I got it done. So, um, I don't know if you know what EPRs are. Basically, um, it started with um, companies make carpet, and you may have actually bought some of this without knowing it. Companies make carpet out of PET. What they do is they take recycled, they take plastic bottles that can be recycled, they make them into a carpet, um, and that fiber then becomes brittle, which is very difficult to recycle. So they take what we could continue to recycle and keep it sustainable, now make it into carpet that's being thrown out, right? And lo and behold, when you're buying it, they're telling you, isn't this great we make this from recycled bottles? So when we first started to meet with them, um, the intent was that we were looking at they're called EPRs, basically charging the industry and saying to them, look, if you're going to make this stuff, you're going to pay a buck a foot on it to help us create a recycling market. There are many people that don't like those kinds of things, in particular businesses and manufacturers, right? So I brought everybody together, sat down in a room and said, look, here's the deal. 
I would really like to work together on this. Please don't misunderstand, I'm not a libertarian, but I don't believe in passing laws that we don't need. So, we sat down, we said, okay, so what can we do? How can we come up with some kind of agreement? So we created a group, and literally we have been meeting for it's probably the last six, seven months. The carpet manufacturers from Mohawk, Shaw, they come up from Georgia to meet with us. Now, this isn't one of those things where people are like really excited and I'm out there telling you that I'm doing things because it's not one of those hot and flash in the pan kind of things. But what we're so excited about is we're thinking we're gonna use this as a template moving forward with other industries. We now have carpet people at the table, we have recyclers at the table. We have companies that are making things out of recycled carpet that now we're gonna talk about bringing them to Illinois. So it's just really exciting to see that happen. I wanna be able to expand this and have talked to them to do a, um, a Midwest group. So include Wisconsin, Indiana, Minnesota, uh, Iowa, and possibly Michigan. So, uh, so we wanna expand, we wanna to continue to meet and have that be the focus. We don't need to create laws to force them to do it if we're all willing to sit at the table and try and figure it out together. So that one I'm really proud of. And I think it helps all of you too. You know, it keeps down prices and, uh, and helps us um, do things that are sustainable and, and are good for the world. So um, public health and safety, it's been a busy year. Um, this one too, Lolly's Law. Um, so it's great news for you because it means that anyone who has a friend, a family member um, that's dealing with addictions or grandma who happens to take some kind of opioid um, pain painkiller, um, you can have available in your home um, basically an EpiPen with naloxone. So this is making naloxone, which many of you probably heard about. Um, are you doing okay with the notes? Um, so um, many of you, I think this is my opponent, by the way. Just thought I'd get that in. Um, anyway, um, so, yeah, I mean, I saw your soft announcement. But anyway, um, what's really cool about this is we're saving lives here in Lake County, in Illinois. Um, I think you all know that we started um, with naloxone being able to be available with the first responders. Uh, there have been dozens of lives saved, uh, more than 10 here in Lake County. This allows pharmacists to dispense. So it's not, they're not prescribing, but if you went in and you said, I would like to have naloxone available in my home, the pharmacist would show you how to use it. It's very simple and you would be able to have it available. I would love to think that someday if someone has a family member that is at a, a sporting event and they drop and, you know, have in an OD situation, there's gonna be somebody out there walking that has that with them. <coughs> Just like today, there are people that know how to do CPR. Mm -hmm. So it's great, we named it Lolly's Law um, after Chelsea Lauderte, who has been working on these issues for so long. I was just thrilled to be able to name the law after her brother who, who died from an overdose. It's part of, um, I passed it on its own um, out of the Senate. It became part of an omnibus bill um, that was run by uh, Leader Lang in the House. Lolly's Law is um, the first section of that bill and it's identified as Lolly's <coughs> Law. And for me, what an honor to be able to do that for someone who's worked so hard for other people. Um, SB 10, expansion of Good Samaritan um, protections. Uh, again, just expands those protections to them when they're dealing um, as first responders with someone who um, is dying for the rape kit. And then they get a bill from the credit company when they didn't pay for it. So there was really, um, it wasn't legal to do that, but they were doing it anyway. So now if you do that, there are fines involved. So if you do that, there are fines to be paid, and believe me, that will get their attention really quickly. So um, this is something I did in, in conjunction with, uh, with uh, our Attorney General, uh, Lisa Madigan, who I think does fabulous work. So I'm just thrilled to be able to carry that out. So these are the committees I serve on, um, Commerce and Economic Development, yeah. Um, you missed one on the other page. Did I? Yeah, the second from the bottom. Thank you so much. 1846. Okay. Oh, correct. Mm -hmm. 
I was uh, speed reading it <laughs> a little too fast. Uh, yeah, so this is a silver alert. Basically, this deals with Alzheimer's issues too. So it basically uh, just creates a statewide emergency alert system, kind of like the alert system that we have if a child is missing the Amber Alert. So it's an alert system um, if someone is um, has dementia or has Alzheimer's and gets out of their home. Uh, so it's just uh, literally a system uh, to be used by uh, first responders out there in the woods. So. so these again are the committees I serve on. Um, I request the committees. Uh, my first two years, I requested committees where I felt I wasn't really strong. You know, I'm one of those kind of people that I really want to have a, a good background, a good knowledge on things. So I asked to be on uh, Commerce and Economic Development this time. It's a new committee. Excited to be there. I'm the vice chair. Um, again, economic development work. For me, if people have a good job and if we have good paying jobs in Lake County, it solves so many of the social ills. It really does. And it also provides, obviously, um, just a base uh, for us to continue to grow as a community. People that have decent jobs pay back into the society. Um, education. I didn't serve on the education <coughs> committee. I have a, a love there, an interest there. I was in education for 16 years, so I'm pretty excited to be there this time. Um, we've, we're doing some really good work. There will you know, continue to be uh, state funding issues. I served on an education advisory committee. Uh, so education funding and how we educate in the state of Illinois is so important because it really is our future. I mean, it literally is our future. So. Um, environment cons um, conservation. Uh, this is my um, <coughs> second time on that. I'm also sorry. I'm, I'm speed reading again. I'm on the education subcommittee on charter schools. So the um, environment con conversation con <coughs> convert. It actually does say conversation. <laughs> so um, it's actually supposed to be conservation. <laughs> Sometimes spell check does those things. Um, it's like <coughs> correct, right? Uh, anyway, so I, I've served there um, since I was elected. It's a good committee. Uh, human services, that one for me, I asked to be on um, this time. I don't feel like it's a big strength for me. I feel like I need to learn more there about how the programs work. So um, I'm excited to be on that committee. It has been, I think, a good learning opportunity. Revenue. I asked, I've stayed on this committee. Most people are bored by this, but I'm fascinated by where the money comes from how the dollars work, um, you know, and, and how we're going to be able to fund things. So um, that's what I've stayed on. And I've also stayed on state government and veterans affairs. But I think these really kind of represent things that are important to people that live in Lake County. We care a lot about education. We care a lot about environmental issues. Um, and, you know, the, obviously economic development. You know, we really need to make sure that we're in a, a good position to compete better with uh, states that are neighboring us. And this is my thing, and I really do mean it. I voted many times on big issues, um, not the way my party would have liked me to have voted. I firmly believe in two things. I'm sure I believe in more, but two things that are always at my core when I make decisions. In my office, I keep a sign that says, do the right thing. It's not always easy to know what the right thing is. And the right thing isn't always black and white. You know, the Tribune, when they didn't endorse me in my race, said I was a hand wringer. I'm damn proud to be a hand wringer. I take these decisions very seriously. I really try and weigh out um, both sides of issues and, and make the best decision. And the other one that I keep up is a frog. And I love this. I, I don't have frog shoes on. But it's to remind me that Springfield, like many places, can be a slippery slope. You can find yourself surrounded by people that maybe you don't agree with, but it's easy to change over time and not notice that you have because your surroundings different. So I keep a frog. It hangs on my door. Uh, it's a pendant so I can wear it when I go see Michael Maddie, and actually I did, but anyway. Um, so the story goes like this. You take a healthy frog, you put it in a pot of boiling water, and it knows to get out. You take a healthy frog, and you put it in a pot of lukewarm water, and you just continue to turn up the temperature. 
Before you know it, the frog is boiling and it's dead. It doesn't notice that it's changed around it. So I keep those two things up and I think they're important things to, to remember. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um,